If all you ever seen was yelling, chaos, murder, and, and, and hell, that's what you're going to exude in the world. Clown wants attention. A king wants respect. I've been through so much pain at this point in my life. I got to the point where all I got left is love. And William, this is Les Brown. And I hung up the first time because I thought it was somebody. I, I'm, I'm bigger than the project. He said, your speech truly inspired me and touched me. So what's your motivation? What was your real motivation? Hey, this is International Motivational Speaker William King Hollis. And today I'm rocking with Boniface Ogunti on the biggest podcast in the world. King Hollis, how did you come from nothing to a million dollar speaker and now you're speaking all over the world? How'd you do it? I did it by working for my purpose and not the money. Wow. Working for the most high. So explain to me, like, because we're going to take you on your journey. Mm -hmm. I want you to go back to when you was first getting started. Like, talk about your inspiration. I want you to talk about everything that got you wanting to get started. How was life before speaking? Well, in the beginning of my career, it was uh, kind of like I really didn't pick it. I didn't really know anything about it. Yeah. Um, I was doing an intern uh, with the ASI Panthers out of Redding, Pennsylvania, and a teacher at yeah. Redding Intermediate High School that saw me uh, talking to the players, and she liked how I motivated and inspired the, the players. I was coaching the defensive line at the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll have to sleep. Yeah. Um, at the Turkey Hill gas station in Redding, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And one day she came in to get her morning coffee and she saw me outside of there. And she said, um, you're the you're the man from the football games that we, we got the tickets for. We brought the kids. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, um, um, if I threw you a couple bucks, would you be able to come speak to a group of young men over at Redding Intermediate High School? Wow. Uh, I agreed and went over there and spoke to them. Um, it was five young men. Uh, within five minutes, they were in tears. Yeah. Uh, when I finished that speech, um, I was almost in tears because a lot of us, you know, when we tell our story, if you sat down, anybody, the audience, yeah. anybody sat down and tell their story, they'll realize um, that they've been through a lot and, yeah. and, and, and it'll make them emotional. Um, so as I walked out of there, I, I cried tears walking uh, back to the Reading, um, I mean, the Abraham Lincoln Hotel in, in downtown Reading, PA. And uh, I was getting ready to commit suicide. About, Why? Uh, Why did you want to commit suicide? At this point, my my mother had passed of a heroin overdose. How my, old were you at the time? I was about 22. 22. Wow. 22, 23. But she had passed uh, years before that. But what I did was, King... Um, I use football to cover up the pain. Yeah. Like I, I use football not to think about it. And I realize, King, with every death, you got to take your time to heal. Yeah. You have to take that time to heal or it's going to come back on you. It's going to come back on your family. It's going to come on, back on your friends. It's, yeah. it's going it's going to make you look like an evil individual. And, and it's nothing more than pain being disguised, wow. um, uh, you know, uh, uh, with anger. Yeah. And, um, you know, at that point, I was so low, man. I, I didn't really want to live anymore. Yeah. Uh, I told my story. I realized that I didn't have many, many people left. Wow. And uh, probably five minutes before I got to the hotel, I got a phone call from the teacher. Wow. And she said, how much do you charge to speak? I said, 75 or $100, something of wow. that nature. Uh, <clears throat> I went back and did an assembly two weeks later. Mm-hmm. And pause that. I can't forget about my mentor, the great Les Brown. Yeah. Uh, I went into the the the, um, Ab the uh, Abraham Lincoln Hotel. Yeah. And watched Les Brown. Uh, it was the um, Georgia Dome speech. Yeah. And I watched how he talked to the audience. I, yeah. I, I watched how he spoke with elegance, and 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 also. Uh, uh, kept humor in his pain even yeah. when he talked about pain. I had one of my awakening moments with Les Brown. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I was I was one of Les Brown fans from since I was a child. Like yeah. I've been watching Les Brown all my life and uh, like meeting people like you who've been watching him and seeing how you're so great at what you do. 
I can tell you came from a great background. Absolutely. And that was from Les Brown background because he left his legacy through you. Man, I'm, it's, it's such an honor for you to say that, brother. And I got to tell everybody in the world, if you, if you see this man in the world or, or, or on social media, he really lives the peace that he exudes on the internet. And he surrounds himself with beautiful, beautiful individuals. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's one that I, I can honestly say, I've done so many podcasts in my life, and I can honestly say that this is the greatest energy um, yeah. that I ever felt where you, where you feel peace. Yeah. And, um, and you feel love. Appreciate you. With, with, with that being said, You're welcome. So, so with that being said, um, uh, when I finished watching that, yeah, two weeks passed. Mm -hmm. I went to do an assembly mm -hmm. with over 500 students. Man, I spoke, told my story. I finished. At the end, I got a standing ovation. Wow, King. If you fast forward 10 years later, um, I'm over 900 million views on YouTube. Uh, the ambassador got received the Ambassador of Peace Award in Kingston, Jamaica. Wow. First speaker to speak during Milan Fashion Week for Philip Pine and Paris Hilton. Yeah. Um, I opened the, the Pine Sports Line uh, mm -hmm. with a freestyle speech. Just did the Super Bowl speech this year. Um, just did the, the the relaunch of the We Must Protect This House Under Armour commercial. And, I, and King, I did mostly all this platinum spoken word albums, et cetera, et cetera. But I did all this, all of this, with with God as my wow. manager, God as my PR, wow. God as everything that I needed, and 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 I tell everybody this, man. Sometimes we wake up and we think that we have all this time to live, uh -huh. but the clock is ticking every single day for you to truly empty the tank of life, really give life everything you got inside of you, because we only got one. You know, most people gonna live their life looking for the diamonds, the Ferraris, and all the nice things. And when they land on their deathbed, they're not gonna be able to think of one person or one village or one place that they gave their heart to and they really tried to lift other people up. Because what people do in this lifetime, we tend to fall away from who we truly are because of what other people done to us. We truly start to fall away from our religion and our faith because of what other people gave us the example of. The anger that's inside of most people come from their mothers and their fathers. The angry person that the world calls you is really not you. Wow. It's something that was programmed in you through your household. If all you ever seen was yelling, chaos, murder, and, and, and hell, that's what you're going to exude in the world. But you know, it's only one medicine on this earth that can heal a man that's in that much pain and that's that, that's in that condition and that is the woman wow the woman the woman so having a woman is god the woman you got to understand how powerful a woman is a woman can give birth to a child and feed that child without anybody wow she can set in a box king and she can feed her babies from her bosom that's medicine, that's power. God knew, God knew. And just like you see right now, men falling away from their morals and who they are. They trying to take, demasculate yeah. a king. That, that, but, 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 but they don't know they're king. And I tell everybody, our people right now is like people walking in a desert, King. Yeah. Imagine walking in the desert and then an enemy came, approached you, and, and pretended to be your friend. Yeah. And then that enemy knocked you upside your head. You was out cold. He took your he took your crown, he took your gold, he took your knowledge, he took everything. And when you woke up, you had a terrible concussion and you no longer knew who you were. Wow. And you saw another person wearing your identity. Wearing your culture, wearing who you are. And you looked at yourself and you told yourself that you are nothing. But all reality, the person that has all the power is a copycat wow. of you. So I, you, yeah, so you got to understand that you're really royalty. Wow. Wow, man. Wow, wow, wow. So I want you to. 
when you first started your journey, you met Les Brown, and that was somebody that inspired you. What's some things that you learned from work from being around him? Well, I met him probably say about five years into my career. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call one morning, it's a funny story. Yeah. He called me on the phone, he was in the hospital. Uh, if people don't know, um, he struggles with cancer. Um, he was in there getting a blood transfusion at the time and he, he needed some inspiration. So he turned on one of my speeches called The Journey. Wow. And that speech starts off with- And now you're on the journey. That's crazy, <laughs> that's crazy, that's crazy. <laughs> You're on the number one podcast in the world. So, yes, King, and I'm so honored, man. And look, he had the journey plan. Yeah. And the speech starts off with, I didn't come this far to only come this far. And he called me on the phone and he said, William, this is Les Brown. And I hung up the first time because I thought it was somebody. I, I'm, I'm sleeping <laughs> in the projects in East Point, <laughs> Georgia. And I couldn't believe it. He, then he called back. He was like, William, this is baby, baby boy. Oh. That's bro. I was like, man, this is unbelievable. He said, your speech truly inspired me and touched me. I'll be, he said, where are you based? I said, I'm in Georgia. He said, I'll be there. I want to sit down in there uh, in the interview and I want to tell the world how great you are. Yeah. And um, it's so crazy. It came full circle for me being back at that hotel and I, 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 me watching his speech at the lowest point in my life. And man, I, I tell people, and I got to tell people, if you don't believe in the God, I just want you to watch me. A man that started in the shelter creating speeches with a pillow and an iPhone in the corner. A kid that couldn't read till he was 16 years old. A kid that buried his mother to a heroin overdose. A kid that lost his father this past Christmas day. Murdered. Left for dead. After serving eight years in penitentiaries. I saw him one time. Wow. I tell everybody that God will change your life, but you have to give something to him. You got to give everything you have in your body to him. You got to trust him. Even if it's a couple days before eviction, you got to trust that the money will come. Money is not the most important thing in the world, ladies and gentlemen. It's wow. serving. serving. The man that serves. The richest man in the world is not the man with millions of dollars in the bank account. Yeah. The richest man in the world is a man that builds a family, creates his family comes home to a dinner table in his family. And if his family tree is rotten, he has the ability to plant another one. That's the richest man in the world. Don't you ever forget it. Wow. So speaking on that, how's your family? My family is absolutely beautiful. My eight month year old is getting so big. My daughters are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, man, I, I, I tell everybody, if it wasn't for my son, my son was born 11 days uh, before my father passed away. And uh, if I didn't have my son, I don't even think the world would have William King Hollis. Boy. And um, you know, between him, you know, my wife, my family, yeah. you know, as a man, and everybody know what I'm talking about. When you lose somebody, you be angry, mm -hmm. and and you 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 can run away everything that loves you because you're angry. Wow. And and you know, it takes a mature man yeah. to get to a point in his life where he says, "Okay, uh, you know, I ask a lot. It's like, give me guidance. You know, give me the steps that I need." And, and what Allah told me was. Um, uh, your father's journey was never your journey, and your family has nothing to do with that situation. Wow. So my job as a man is to control the temperature of my home. Wow. Let God take that. But I, got, I still got a job to do. 
You feel what I'm saying? Yes. Just because you watch another employee walk out the office because they finish their shift don't yeah. mean that you stop your job. I can't stop my job. Wow. Your shift, his shift was up. My shift, had, I got to pick up double. You know? Yes. I got to I gotta take on the family. Yes. I got to fix everything that was built wrong. Yes. And it's so much trauma. You know, I, I went through so much different traumas with my family. You know, people... People, you know, one thing, a lot of people be afraid to tell a story. I, love I want you to tell us your story. What trauma you went through with your family? You know, uh, you know, my trauma was, you know, just, just watching my father, um, you know, be extremely violent, mm -hmm. you know. Like uh, beating your mom? Uh, nah, he, he did, he did, he did that too, but wow. my, my mom had some family. They jumped him before I didn't see them bloody. Wow. From doing things, that's another side of the trauma. Um, you know, getting so many calls that my father was shot so many times. Um, you know, it was so many times that he said he died or wow. I had to hear that over and over. And then, you know, as a kid, you would hear your dad die. You know, it, 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 even if it's not true, yeah. it's still dra traumatic, it's so dramatic. It, dramatic to you. Um, you know, watching my, my, my uncles and, and, and my aunties shoot dope in the bathroom as I try to go to the bathroom to get ready for school and, um, you know, mom leaving for multiple hours and even days and, you know, really, man, I've been through so much pain at this point in my life. I got to the point where all I got left is love. Wow. You know, I really ain't got like, there's, there's no fight in my body to argue or or tear anybody down, or or have a, a, a nut drop, a nut sack dropping comp competition. Mm -hmm. um, no ego driven. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't care for those conversations. I'm all about, um, I'm all about speaking and watching great men accomplish their dreams. Wow. And and do amazing things in this world. That's something that I take pride in because you know. Not all of us going to be that angel flying past each other because everybody's not going. That's true. And, and, and that's, a, that's a tough pill to swallow. You know, a lot of people believe when they pass away, there's just going to be this silence and a bliss. And a bliss, I promise you, is not. Um, I, I know this to be true. When my mother passed away, I had, I had a dream. And my mother what was said, that dream? My mother said in this dream that I'm on a long journey, but I'm almost home. So what I tell people is, when you die, it's another journey. What's that journey? <laughs> that we have to wait and see. But I know it's another journey. And I know that this is a test run. This is a test run. To see are you fit to live as a king. Wow. What made you come up with that conclusion? Because I, I realized that my creator can't really do anything with anything that's dirty. He's a man that takes pride in cleanliness. Yes. And a lot of men are pigs. Yes. Kings are not pigs. Yes. You got to understand, it's a difference in this world. You know, it, it, you know, a clown wants attention. A king wants respect. Yes. So, so respect from a king is he expects you to do everything right. You feel me? That's the expectation That's from true. a king. And I don't. I'm not saying be perfect in your. If you make mistakes, I'm saying make the right morally moral decision every time. Yep. I always tell people that even though you're not perfect, if you aim for perfection, you'll be more perfect than to others. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you actually understand that. Yes, sir. Because a lot of people out there, they aim for perfection. They, they, they don't understand that whatever goals and aspiration that they want to achieve in their life, they can achieve those goals and aspiration. But they have to be willing to go out there and want to seek those opportunities. You know? There's opportunities always in front of people's face all the time. But 90% of people are just not awake. 
yes, their subconscious mind is programmed for the wrong thing. A lot of people have a low awareness. You know, their awareness is low. You can tell them everything in the world for them to be able to achieve things in their life. But because their awareness is so low, they're not willing to even see. So I'm glad that your awareness is high because you're very aware. Oh, yeah. So now you have your family. Mm -hmm. How many kids do you have? I have three babies. How old are they? I have a 14, seven-year-old, and eight months. Wow. Yep. I know they're so proud to have a dad like you. Man, I'm so proud to have children like them. That's my, that's my. And, I, and it's so crazy you talk about these children and I don't, I don't, I, don't want, I always do this when we talk about my children. Every, you know, when you have children um, out of wedlock sometimes, yeah. uh, it, it, can, it can cause a lot of trauma mm -hmm. to the entire family. Yeah. And a lot of men fight to get back on track to be able to provide for their family. I thank God that I'm able to do so again. Mm -hmm. But it was times that I couldn't. And that's what I want. That's the message I want to tell the father out there. That it's not over until it's over, King. Wow. I watched a scene on the movie Mule. And I'm going to leave you with this. I watched a scene with the movie Mule. And Clint Eastwood was in the, in the on his de deathbed. Um, and his daughter was talking to him. Yeah. Uh, his Clint Eastwood was running dope for people to make money for the family. And it's so crazy. His daughter walked in as he laid on his deathbed and she said, Dad, it wasn't the things that you can give me. It was your time that I wanted the most. Yes. And he died. Wow. And I, it was a, that, you know, sometimes certain things hit you and you get it. Mm-hmm. And I tell everybody, man, it's not about the money. Yep. It's about the time. It's all about the time. It's about the time. Yeah. If you can give the time, and there's going to be mothers out there that fight you, combat you, don't want you to see them, don't want to do anything. But the one thing I realize is this. Yep. That little girl and that little boy will come searching for you. They will find you. That's true. And nobody can keep them away from it. That's the power of God. God will take a child to his or her father with or without the mother's permission. Wow. It's in her, it's in the child's DNA to mm -hmm. find the king. Yeah. So what's your real motivation? Because your motivation is not about the money. Yeah. So let's go into your real motivation that got you to who you are today. Because my motivation when I was first getting started was I came from nothing, as you know. Came from the third poorest country in the world, Liberia. Came to the United States with nothing. I lived in a basement or in my grandma's house with 13 people in one house. You know, going to elementary. Mm -hmm. My motivation when I first started was to prove people that I could do it. So what's your motivation? What was your real motivation that kept you going? Because there's another person out there. My, motiv mm. My motivation was to keep living another day and another day. Why is that? Because I didn't want to live anymore. And when I spoke to some people and I seen that I helped them, they put, you know, the video game when you dying on Mortal Kombat yeah. and your energy going down. Yeah. Every time I gave a speech, my energy would go back up. My confidence would go back up. Wasn't getting paid, nothing barely. But my confidence in my life was going back up. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 and I started to heal. That's why I tell everybody that when I'm speaking to them, don't ever thank me because I promise you, I was just talking to myself. Wow. And you just happened to hear it. Wow. So that's why the motivation was so real because I'm not talking to you as a lot of speakers just talking to you. I'm going through this shit with you. Wow. I'm crying these tears, fighting these demons with you. Wow. And I want to see you come with me. That's why my fan base that follow me, I can't even call you a fan base, my family that yeah. follow me yeah. are individuals that they, they grinded from nothing. They came out of darkness with me. 
Wow. And they here today with me. So I'm when, when we go into these conferences and we go in here to speak, they, they can look me in my eyes and they know that I'm telling the truth. Wow. When I say I love you, King, I, I mean I love you. Yeah. When I say I go to war with you, King, I will go to war with you, King. Yeah. I'm him. I'm not that. I'm not the other one. Yeah. You know? So I, 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 I take pride in being able to deliver motivation like no other speaker does in the world. For you to become the person you are today, you have to make a certain level of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. What was some of the sacrifice that you made to be able to be such a wonderful speaker that you are today? Sleeping on couches, being kicked out of houses, Hear people say, get, get your broke ass up. You ain't gonna make it. That, that's what made me. Wow. That's what made me, King. Wow. That's what made me. Wow. I remember How that. did it used to feel when you used to slip on couches? I felt like tomorrow is another day to eat off the land. Yeah. It's my mentality. I eat off the land. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So how did you have to, cause, because the person you are today is a completely different person than you used to be. Mm -hmm. You have to kill your old version of yourself. I always tell people you have to kill the old version you are to become the person you deserve to be. Mm -hmm. So how did you kill that old version of yourself? I always tell people I can't do, I can't go to the rim and dunk the ball backwards. I'm not. LeBron James. I can tell my brother, I never killed anything. I evolved. Every evolved. piece of our life is important to the final chapter of our life. Mm -hmm. Every lesson, that, without that, I can't be this. Yeah. Without this, I can't be that. Yeah. Without this person telling me I ain't shit, I won't be that. Mm -hmm. And then I had to realize this. Like the great Jim Rome said, when a person tells you no, or say you're not good enough, don't get upset. Mm -hmm. That's a message to yourself to say, I gotta go increase my value. Wow. So that's, that's life. Like everybody is great. Everybody is great. Everybody is a walking million dollar check. It's just the fact that no, not everybody signs the signature. Not everybody sure. believes the check is real. That's true. So they hold on to it and it collects cobwebs and, and they get to a mental health state where they don't want to live anymore because they realize that they're seconds away from death and the only thing that will remember them is the dirt that covers them. Wow. So that's why I get up and I tell everybody, like the great Les Brown said, you got to live full and die empty. You got to empty your tank out here. Yeah. King, you got a responsibility. Yes. You got a responsibility to push all these fake. Yes. Pretending individuals that have no love and no heart. Yeah. For the trenches. Yeah. And you got to be that person. You got to be that person, bro. Yeah. To help your brothers, bro. Yes. To be there for your brothers, bro. To never, ever change yeah. that amazing, strong blood that pumps through your veins and your heart, King. That's, that's, the, that's the blood in the veins of African kings and warriors. Yeah. You one of them, one of the purest. Yeah. It's a responsibility. And that's why I'm honored to be on this show because I know yeah. that you have everything that it takes to continue to lead our people to financial freedom. Wow. So I have a question for you. <laughs> so how did you learn how did you learn how to control your emotion and reaction through situations that came through your life? 
Um, it was a book called The Message to the Black Man by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He told me that if a man cannot control his emotions, that man is not yet a man. You see, emotions is the main reason why some, most men are incarcerated. Emotions is the main reason for divorce rates. Wow. You remember the song, uh, what's the lady that made Tina Turner? What's love but a What's love, love got to do, it, got, got to do, do this, her. Just a secondary what? Emotion. Wow. So once you're able to control your emotions, you able to control your universe. Yeah. Somebody can call you anything they want to call you. Yeah. And it won't bother you because you know that that person is emotionally unstable. And it's in his DNA to act this way. What yeah. what they say forgive <laughs> but don't for forget. they don't know they don't know what they do. Yeah. Pre if you listen to your repeat that again for the you audience. Said, you said I said you forgive for they don't know what they do. Yep. If you listen to the instruction, you will navigate through every devil that come to you, bro. Yeah. You can see the devil. When you really connected to God, Yeah. you can see the devil. You can look at him. You can see it in his eyes. Yeah. That he hates you. Yeah. That he hates you. That he wants to kill you and he don't even know you. Wow. But when you have that discernment, and that spirit on you, you'll be able to wit, you'll be able to point out anything in any situation that's gonna happen or gonna occur. So at the end of the day, emotions mm -hmm. is that's like the that's that's, that's like the foundation yeah. of a man. Yep. That and another thing, a lot of people that that make it. Mm -hmm. They crumble. Wow. Why do you think they crumble? They crumble because the moment that you think you made it yeah. is the moment that you start at the beginning. Yep. If you don't keep the hunger from when you first started, you will lose everything that you have. You take your foot off the gas for one second. It's going to be another king in the vehicle and always, try, trying to come right past you. you always, know, it, it's going to go like this. And I'm, gonna, and I'm not talking to the king. I, I'm telling, I, I'm talking to this audience. Yeah, and I always tell people is you got to have a long-term thinking. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. You got to see the future. You know? Because, and you got to, something called line, line linear system. When I... In my life, I live my life as nonlinear. Everything I do compounds over time, yeah. you know? And that's how a lot of people should live their life out there. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're doing, it compounds. The person you're going to be four or five years from now is not going to be the same person you are today. Right. So every action that you're doing, just understand that it's benefiting your future self. So if that action isn't gonna, is not dedicated to your future self, you shouldn't be taking that action. 100%. So I want to ask you a question. Because we've been talking about a lot of different things tonight. The question I want to ask you is do you believe in yourself? Oh, man. 100%. Who do you see yourself to be five years from now? The number one speaker in the world. On paper. On the internet. Yeah. Yeah. The number one speaker in the world. The first man to touch over 3 billion and inspire over 3 billion people. I think that's going to come very shortly. Yeah, it's coming. And, I, and you know what's even better? The first king to put his hand back down at the bottom and bring millions of kings with me. Yeah. Yes. That's what it's about. Awesome, awesome, man. Awesome, man. So you have a really wonderful family relationship. Mm -hmm. you, you have three beautiful kids. Now the question I want to ask you, how's your wife? How's the relationship with her? 
my relationship with my wife is absolutely beautiful. Um, she gets emotional because, you know, when you get married on your come up in your career, emotions change, mm -hmm. you know. They got to get comfortable with you traveling and different people in your face, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes women, yeah. and all of that, the confidence, yeah. you know. We're, we're our career is growing, but they're just with us. Yeah. You know, so you, it, to, to me, you know, I keep, I'm learning that in, as a husband, it's all about balance. It's all about being able to multitask, you know, be able to handle your business and get into that wolf zone yeah. when you're in that entrepreneur space. And then when you get home, being able to turn it off, give your son some playtime, yeah. give your daughter some playtime, you know, take some time to give them some attention. And with my wife, my, my wife is just one of my biggest supporters. She's going to she's gonna support me through anything, even if she don't like it. Yeah. Um, she understands that my dream is is, is very important to um, the way we want to live our life and, and, and how we want to become something. Because no matter, how, no matter how much I love my wife, if my wife tried to take me away from this dream, I couldn't be with my wife. Yeah. You know, I, 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 it's unfortunate. I couldn't. This is what feeds us. Mm -hmm. This is what takes care of us. And I tell everybody, I'm a gladiator. I understand this, bro, that in my life, sacrifice is everything. Yep. And for me, if, if, if I always been that person that I take that, I take them, them knives in the back. Yeah. You know, so you can keep going. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I really feel that Allah blessed me so much that, you know, you can take anything you want to take from me. If a man takes it away, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. If God takes it away, I'm fighting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, anything on this earth, money wise, you know, you can you can speak that. Yes. You know, money money is cool, but once you get into impact in the world, bro, when you get into impact in the world, I'm talking about little kids, little boys running up to you from the private saying, "You yeah. made me believe." Yeah that I could be something, Mr. Hollis. That right there is like a million dollar check every testimony, every time I hear thank you, every time I hear we went through this and then I whisper in their ear, I'm just like you. Yeah, and that's the same, same thing with me, brother. Like a lot of people, they see me to this day, right? all the success and all the wonderful things I've done in my life, they think I just disappeared here. <laughs> Everything was designed from the day I used to work at Costco. Because when I first started, I used to work at Costco. So before even that, I used to play basketball. So I would play basketball and a lot of people didn't know, like I always wanted to do more because I live with my grandma. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest. So my grandma basically took care of me. Mm -hmm. She wanted to protect me because all my older cousins was bad. So she ground me for three months in the house. <laughs> she ground me for three months in the house. And she's like, hey, you can't go nowhere because she wanted to protect me because I was just the guy who just wanted to help her, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, and she wanted to protect me. So I was just that guy who wanted to just be there. And looking back, that's what my life changed because my grandma, she made me the person I am today. And I'm glad that you understand that family is the most important thing in life because there's a lot of people out there, they think that it's about having a whole bunch of women around them, you know, having a whole bunch of women and thinking that's life. And you know, throughout my life, I had that and it was never substance. It never made me a better version of myself. And I'm glad that your wife was able to make you a better version of yourself because you're a king today. So we gotta shout her out. What's her name? Uh, Sharita Hollis. Sharita Hollis. Sharita Hollis. Thank you for building this king right here. Absolutely, that's the queen. Shout out to the, that, that's the, that's the boss lady, man. She gets it done. So King Hollis, so King Hollis, what's the future looking like for you? What's some things that you're venturing into business-wise? What's the things that you have on your plate? Because I see that 
you've been doing a lot of motivational speaking all over the world. Mm -hmm. So where does, where's your next step? Um, you know, one of my next steps when it comes to business, you know, obviously, um, I would love to start, uh, you know, getting mentored by you and learning a little more about business. I've been so blessed to be able to make an amazing living off just literally speaking yeah. that I didn't really have to go into any more products or, yeah. or major things of that nature. Um, but, you know, I, want, I really want to get heavy yeah. um, into the real estate space, Yeah, um, study it a lot. Uh, I really want to get heavy into, you know, my nonprofit, launching my nonprofit um, in November. I got to take you to Africa. So Man. you're going to have to come to Africa with me so I can take you around so we can do some big things out there. That would be legendary, bro. You know, my first speech went viral in Africa. It was called Young King. That was the first speech I made. In what the did show. you talk about in that speech? Um, I, I, it, it was basically about a boy growing up in the projects. Um, seeing nothing but blood bullets on the ground, but when he looked in the sky, he saw his dreams. Wow. He saw his opportunity. And 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 that's that's how the speech was, you know. I freestyle all my speeches. Yeah. So I never really can verbatim them, spit them all out. Because you know? once I give them, that's mm -hmm. how I know it ain't me. I, yeah. You know, I, I it comes know, from it comes from natural. From right that, away and that's what something place. i really love about you men watching you for years because you speak off the rip <laughs> you speak right from your heart at that second you know that's something i really really admire about you thank you my is there man. any last words you would like to say for these people before we head out of here man i would like to say that if you guys have the opportunity to turn on this podcast every single week month Make sure you turn it on because the person behind it is truly doing a great job at giving individuals opportunities to showcase their visions, their dreams, you know, their aspirations. And that's just so important in these times. So many podcasts are so full of so much negativity. Yeah. For a brother to bring something positive to the Internet, something that's definitely of God. I need everybody to support this. And to all those kings and queens out there ready to give up on life, I want you guys to do one thing tonight. I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to tell yourself that I am amazing. I am beautiful. I do matter. And my dreams can come true. It's all up to me to change my life. I realize that nobody will come to save me. I can only save myself. And the object of life is to live full and die empty. So ladies and gentlemen, do that for me. Live full and die empty. How can these people follow you, man? Follow me at William King Hollis on Instagram and the links to take you everywhere else. Just go on William King Hollis. Um, I'm on YouTube. I'm everywhere. Uh, but, but Instagram, you can get everything in one, one, one shot, man. And I just love to post every day, every morning. Uh, I just love to give motivation, man. I love to put out positivity in a world full of negative, man. It's like, you know, I could be on the internet acting like a clown, get, yeah. trying to get attention. Yeah. Um, but I choose to stay a king and I yeah. choose to speak to the kings that recognize it. Yeah. And I'm honored that you, my brother, a true king, recognized it and allowed me to be on this show today, man. So of course, brother. You, bro. Of course, brother. I'm glad to have you on. Yes, sir. And that's it for this episode. We'll see you guys on the next one. Make sure you like and subscribe to the biggest podcast in the world, The Journey. Zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff.